Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to my craft room again. Today, I am going to share with you how to make this purse. I'm doing this as a Mother's Day treat holder, gift card holder, and um, it may look complicated, but I'll tell you, it's pretty simple to make. So I'm going to give you the directions, what you need, what papers you need, what tools you need. And as always, there will be a link with this video to my blog post, which will you'll also be able to access a downloadable PDF of instructions with all of the sizes for your papers and it walks you through step by step with pictures for how to do this. So don't worry if you um, are trying to follow along with this video and I, I miss up a size, which I occasionally do, and um, you can always get it off of my blog and the PDF. So let's get going. This paper features the Cosette um, collection, which is um, the April cl featured collection from Close to My Heart. I'm loving the colors in this and the feel of this. It's such a fun, pretty springtime collection, and this is going to be perfect for Mother's Day. And uh, just a little hint, there will be a follow-on video with a card that I made specifically for Mother's Day that will coordinate with this purse. So here we go. Let's just get started. So to start with, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock. You're going to have your base cardstock for your base color of your purse. And then you're going to have your accent color for your straps and um, the banding and the handles and stuff like that. So that's what you're going to need. Then you're going to need a piece of pattern paper. This is very pattern paper um, friendly because you're really only using three little pieces of pattern paper for this. So let me put this aside and we'll get to the sizes that you're going to cut. So from your col car base cardstock, you're going to cut two pieces that are five inches wide by four and a half inches tall. These will be your sides. Then you're going to have one piece. This is three and a half inches wide by 12 inches tall. This is going to be your kind of band, your sides of it. Then a little additional piece, and this is kind of optional, is this one is three and a quarter by three and a half, and this is what we make a little back pocket from. So that's out of your base purse color. Now from your color that you're gonna use for your straps and bands, you're going to need to cut two pieces that are three quarters inch wide by 12 inches tall two pieces and I'm saying two but it's not really a full two this is these are a half inch wide by 12 inches tall these will be used for kind of the band around the purse I've got one little piece that is three quarters inches wide by um, one and a half inches tall and then two small pieces that are quarter inch wide one is three and a half inches tall this one is two inches tall. And this is kind of, kind of for an optional little kind of fringed detail that I have hanging from the handle. Now from your pattern paper, you're gonna need two pieces that are five inches wide by two and three quarters inch tall. And then one piece that is three inches wide by one inch tall. And this is actually the back side of this paper. And as you can see, I already put some adhesive on. So that's, these are your basic papers you need. Little thing that I also use is this is a Velcro dot. I've used these a lot for closures on a lot of my paper crafting projects. So you're gonna need this. This will work with your clasp. Now I'm just gonna put this stuff aside and let's talk about the tools that we're gonna need. Let's just clean this off for a second. Move this over. Okay, you're gonna need your 12 inch trimmer. You're gonna need, if your trimmer has a scoring blade, you're gonna need the scoring blade with it. If other, otherwise, you're going to need a scoring platform. That's one piece. Of course, a good pair of scissors. A good strong adhesive tape is what I always recommend for any paper crafting project. Some fringe scissors, because when, if, you, if you're going to do the optional fringed piece decoration on it, we'll need that. I'm going to need a ruler and a pencil. And then I as kind of an optional thing, what I did is I corner rounded the edges of my purse here, the parts of my handles here, and on my clasp. So again, everything I do with this is optional. If you don't want to corner round, if you want a flatter, straighter edge to your purse, 
skip the corner rounding step. If you don't want to do the corner rounding on your straps, again, skip the step. The, a lot of this stuff that I'm telling you, kind of optional decorations that you can do to add something to the purse, kind of customize it for what you need. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do move my, is I need to trim down because I angled this purse. So when you've trimmed it down, this top edge ends up being four and a half inches wide. Your bottom edge is five inches. So I do this on the back side of my paper always. I'm going to line up my paper with my, um, with the, excuse me, with my ruler here. And I'm going to make a mark a quarter inch in on both sides. So you can see the quarter inch in on both sides. Same thing on this. Let's see, get that lined up. So a quarter inch in here, quarter inch in here. And then, so that's really all I need my ruler and my pencil for. Now I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm gonna trim from the mark to the bottom corner of my piece. So just to kind of give it a slightly angled profile going up. And again, bottom corner of my piece to the mark at the top. And there's one, second one. Oops. And then this. Now the next step on this Is now I used two different corner rounders on this because I wanted a slightly larger corner rounded profile on this but I used a smaller one on my strap so I am going to corner round this is my habit I tend to turn corner rounders upside down the bottom corners of my purse base bottom two corners and my scraps go everywhere Okay, so now I've done my bottom two corners, so I'll put that aside. Now, the next step, and I highly recommend doing it this way, is I'm going to put my pattern paper on here. I'm not going to corner around this yet, because I'm going to trim off excess, because it, it just makes it a little easier. So I'm, I put it strong adhesive on the back of my pattern paper, and I'm just going to line it up with the bottom roughly, because then I'm going to just use this to, reason why I didn't corner around this is because if you noticed, this is at an angle and this is straight. So if I tried to corner around it beforehand, and before I placed it on there, my angles could be off and I don't want that to happen. So place both pieces on the front side of my paper. Then I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off the excess pattern paper off the back. And I recommend, because I have adhesive on the back of these, this paper, and I'm trimming through adhesive, I always use a good non-stick scissors so that they don't get all gunked up by the adhesive residue. So just do this. There's one. And go around. Trim off the excess. Okay, so now I've got my two pieces here. Next part I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my strap on. This is just my, it just makes it easier because I'm gonna put the, the straps on this in part in pieces. So I'm gonna do each side. Okay, gotta get the adhesive back. And this is why I'm using two pieces because I'm gonna be Off. Okay, so I'm just going to take this off. And the reason why I'm going to do this with these lined up next to each other so that the strap basically goes across, I should say the banding goes across both pieces at the same location, just like that. And then just flip it over 
and snip off the excess. I'm going to probably have this stuck all over my desk here. Being that I'm a righty, I tend to always snip from one side, just kind of habit. So now I've got my two sides like that. I'm going to put those aside for now. Next step that I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to clear off a little bit of my junk, my trash before I get going. <laughs> All right, I am going to now work on this, the side bands. So I'm going to take my, tr my trimmer blade out and put my scoring blade in. I am going to score this along its length at one half inch on either side. And then what I did here, because this will kind of pucker in, is I did a, a another score down the very center of this. So, which basically takes you to, let's see, this is three and a half. So I'm gonna want this to be at one and three quarters. So now I have three score lines. And now to deal with the base going around, I'm gonna score this at, three and a half inches on this side because this doesn't come up to the top of the side of it and then I'm going to flip it around and three and a half inches here so there's my sides to my purse base so I am going to basically these are going to be folded under and this is going to be so we've got a mountain fold a valley fold and then another mountain fold for those of you that are <laughs> used to the names of the folds and then we'll just slightly fold these because we're going to be curving these edges now I want to tell you here so if you're going to do this with not corner rounding the edges this is a step you're not going to need to do what I do whenever I've got anything that's going around a corner is I kind of make a couple V's in it because it just makes the going around the corner a lot easier. And I'm gonna make an extra V in each side because this way it helps you curve that paper. So I'm gonna cut, do V cuts on the corners. This just, I find if you're doing anything circular, oval, anything that has a curve to it, doing a V cut, a notch to create a little bit of a tab, V cut notch, whatever you wanna call it, makes going around that corner a lot easier. So I do it at the score line, on either side of the score line, the three and a half inch score line I did across, and then I just do one little notch cut, V cut, on either side of that. And then over here. And again, finish this off, and then I'm going to put adhesive on this, and I'll show you how we, how I kind of assembled this, assembled this to the sides. So I'll just clear off my little scraps. Okay, so the strong adhesive I'm going to place on these tabs here, and then I'll show you where I place it on the back of the purse bases. So just get this adhesive placed down. Now we're going to put some adhesive also on the back of the purse, front and back, on the back side of that paper. All right, so we have this. This is ready. Now I'm going to put a little bit of extra adhesive because anything I've found that if you're doing anything with a corner, it has a tendency to definitely not like to stick corner, you know, unless you use an incredibly strong glue. So I just add an extra layer of adhesive on my corners. And the nice thing with this tape is that you can kind of work it around your corners. So I'm gonna do this.
Okay, so that's what I need to do my base. So what I do is I'm going to do each side at a one side at a time. Oftentimes you'll see when I do these things, I will start with two pieces on the side and work my way around. This I found it was easier to, because I really want to make sure that this is centered. So if you notice, I'm only going to take the adhesive backing off of this center piece. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to line up my base against that score line. Adhere that. Then I'm going to take my sides off. Come on. These <laughs> fit back and cracks me up half the time. All right. Now what I do is I just kind of slowly, one hand in, one hand on the outside, I work my way around the corner, folding it, curling it as I go, and then go up the side. So you can kind of see this. So I, I curled this as I went around the corner and up the side. So I'll show you on this side. So taking, this is why I have that extra piece of adhesive. I take the tabs, tuck them behind as I curl and work my way. Actually, you probably could see it better. How about this? That Hopefully that gives you a little bit better. See how I'm curling the tabs inside and then lining up my side. So there's kind of the inside of it with one side of the purse assembled. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I always start with the center of this piece. So I'm going to line up this with this piece here. Oops, let's put it on wrong. Be very careful. I've done this many times where I don't quite line something up correctly and this adhesive is strong and it gets stuck and then you ruin your paper. So line the base up. Take my adhesive backing off of one side and I'll take it off the other side until I'm ready to do it. And then one hand inside, again, tucking these tabs in to create my corner and I work my way up. And oftentimes I will use a bone folder or a scoring tool to just kind of reach inside and really kind of burnish it down. So this is nice because this tabs have already kind of tucked themselves in as I was going. So uh, this one, I just really have to line up my side and then press on my tabs on the inside. There's, you can see the inside and the outside. So that's my basic piece. Now the next step, I'm gonna attach my pocket. So the pocket is, like I said, three and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. We are going to score it. So we are going to score it at, uh, this is the three and a half inch side here. So we're going to start with this. We're going to do it on one side here, rotate 90 degrees, score at the bottom, rotate another 90 degrees, another score. And these are all half inch scores. Then I'm going to cut my tabs, my bottom tabs away. And then I'm going to fold these in. And if you have a bone folder handy, it's always good. You can use that to burnish it. Sometimes I just use my nails. And now I'm just going to take my adhesive, put it on my, excuse me, my tabs here. And this, again, it's, the pocket's an optional piece. I just kind of liked it because I thought it'd be fun to stick a tag in or something like that. So I'm going to take my backing off my adhesive. I find these things get kind of stuck everywhere. <laughs> so I'll come downstairs and I'll have little pieces all stuck to me. So I'm going to fold in the bottom. I'm going to fold over the sides. Now, I don't fold it super close because... I want room to be able to tuck something into this. So if you can kind of see, it's a little bit open. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna lay this roughly the center on the back, whichever piece you decide to be your back side. And then I'll go on the front, go inside and really press down to adhere this. So that's that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish my bands along 
the sides of this. So I'm going to just, first, I'm just going to put the adhesive on this first, just because. So what I really need, and I'm actually going to cut this to make it a little bit easier, is this here is, let's so this should be two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to take my scoring blade out. Oops, excuse me. Cut this. And then this is three inches wide. So I'm going to cut two pieces that are three inches. And then one that is yeah, two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Okay, so... I'm just going to remove my adhesive. I found it was easier to do this way than try to put the band around and on top of everything. So I'm going to put this band piece here on top of that. And then, you know, this again, a lot of the decorative elements that I'm doing on this are optional for you. I had some ideas for this. And it's always okay if it's a little bit longer. I think I might have cut that too long. So one side. Yeah, it never hurt to be a little bit wider than you necessarily need it. Oh yeah, two and a half inches. Sorry, that's what it meant. So there's my box, and you can always tuck these in. You could do this if you wrapped one piece around. That's completely up to you. I did it in pieces just because it made it easier, especially from a scoring and folding standpoint. So there's the basic part of it. Now we're going to move on to our handles and to the little fringed, well, the clasp and then the fringed element. So I'm just trying to get something. So my two handle pieces. What I did on this, put this over, put that in. All right. What I did is I took these three quarter inch wide pieces and I scored them in the center area. And this gives me about two and a half, I'm gonna say three inches from each side. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna put this in the cent, you know, line this up in the center, and I am gonna score from nine inches to three inches on each piece. Okay. So this is this this is gonna be scoring down the center of this. So if it's three quarters of an inch, so you're looking at, oh, let's see, that's six eighths. So three eighths is about the place if you're going to do this on a platform. So I'm going to score again, three inches to nine inches. Okay. And that's really all I need to do for my scoring. So before I did anything else with this, I am going to corner round. This one works a little bit better on the front. Corner around my bottoms. Again, this is a kind of an optional, an optional technique. And you know, sometimes the corner runner doesn't want to work well with me. I think it needs to be cleaned out. But and this is why sometimes I do on the back side a little bit better. So yeah, this, these thin papers sometimes don't like corner rounders because they don't quite line up, but hey. We always, it's, mistakes are common. So there's a, kind of a corner rounded piece. So I'm gonna do that on both pieces of my straps. And then it just kind of gives it an a, a additional look to it. And one of the uh, things that I kind of thought would be cute um, that you could do is you could make some faux stitching on your straps and st on your bands and stuff like that you know with a pen you could you know do some marks here and around the edges here and up all along it just to make it look like it's actually like leather that's been stitched i thought that that would be kind of a cool i have a cool technique i haven't done that so now i'm going to fold this so i stop at the score line where i stop the score line i'm going to fold each of these in half and what i'm going to do in half, yeah in half along the score line is I'm going to place my strong adhesive 
on one side of the score line here. And then I post two little pieces kind of just down along this bottom part where it's going to adhere to the purse. So I'm going to do this on both. probably add brads to look like rivets if you know you want to kind of make it look like leather like where it would attach to the purse um, I've seen people use um, seen variations of this other kind of purses I've seen online where people done um, like circles like they've had a piece of paper coming up here and then the strap kind of loops through a circular element here where it attaches i thought that was kind of cute um i'm trying to make this out of all paper so i'm you know other than of course the velcro dots so that's why i didn't really kind of get into using some like plastic acrylic circles or things like that ring i should say rings um but i thought that this would be cute and you can really decorate this anyway with any kind of you could do some fakes yeah like i said fake stitching on it all right so i'm gonna take this now I'm going to fold this in, and then what I do with this, because it is going to have to be curved, is I just kind of use my hand to kind of give it a curvature to it like this, okay? I'll do the same thing with this one. Again, fold it in along those score lines, and then give it, curl it, kind of using your hands to give it that curve for the handle. Fix my little oops on my corner rounding. There we go. All right, now what I did, I start with the back because I wanna line this up to be on either side of that pocket that I put on there. So let's just do this. I'm gonna take my adhesive backing off. And then I line it up, I'll start with one side. I want it to just kind of cover I'm going to put it to either side of the pocket. Just cover the band and bring it around to this side. Just covering the band. So see what I what I did here? On either side. Now I'm going to do the same thing. And the reason I did the back first, of course, because I wanted I'm using the pocket as a placement tool. And now I'm going to use the back strap handle to help me place the front. So, and another reason for having this kind of score line is I'm able to bring this in. <laughs> of course, the adhesive backing decides to stick to it again. So I'm gonna use this, oops, sorry, I'm off camera a little bit, to help me place there. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. Kind of clasp it, hold it, grab it together. to place, oops, come on, there we go. So there's my purse with your hand, with the handles. Now, the next step, the clasp, is a, again, another kind of optional step. If you don't wanna do something like that, you don't have to. Um, I did this, and I did corner around it, but I'm gonna kind of freehand it this time just because I used a longer piece ahead of time before, but, you can kind of corner around the piece. And I give this a little bit of a curl. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my Velcro dot on the back of this. So when I close it, I'll create my closure. So close it, create my closure. Oh boy, my, my, my descriptions are just so perfect. <laughs> All right, so we've got taking the backing off. Then what I'm gonna do is I start on the back, again, I'm starting on the back side of this, and I'm gonna put, roughly center this. Oops, stuck to my finger. Okay, so I roughly center it. Now I'm gonna bring the two sides together. I'm not gonna bring it completely together because if you fill it up, you want a little bit of give to it. So I'm gonna give it a 
a little bit of room and then I'm going to attach the front and stick my finger in to adhere that. So there's the basic purse. Now the fringe element, which is an optional element, I took a piece of paper three inches by one inch and then using my fringe scissors. And again, you could use probably just regular micro tip scissors to do this, fringe it all the way. And then I put a piece of adhesive on the back and I then just took the adhesive off and then I'm going to roll this, roll this up all the way, give it a fringe and you can play with this. You can kind of use your fingers to kind of push out the fringe parts. And then what I did is I took my longer of my two quarter inch tall pieces, adhesive on both sides of it. And this is going to be what goes around here. And then what I do is I attach it to the top of my fringe area, and then I'm going to cover it. So it looks like this to start. And then I'm gonna cover it with the other piece, which I put again, strong adhesive on the back of. And then I just wrap this around it like a, you know, like you have that, like the metal furl that goes around it when you have a fringe piece. And you could do the fringe with, with thread, you know, something like that. So there is my Mother's Day purse treat gift card holder featuring the Cosette collection from Close to My Heart. I really want to thank you guys for joining me for this video. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it and can use the directions. And it, like I said, there'll be a link to the um, my blog post where you can get a PDF of the directions on this. And um, enjoy. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.